Okay, here we are, another lesson. Right now we're going to do bones up here on the top of the screen. Bones. Okay, well let's see. Dogs love bones. And of course dogs couldn't live without bones. This bone here happens to be the femur from a cow. The femur usually is the largest, at least the strongest, maybe not the absolute longest bone in the body, but it is a very large bone, otherwise known as the hip bone. But we all know dogs love bones, but look at without the bones, the dog would not be able to stand. So bones give us structure or the dog structure or any animal you want to talk about. It gives them structure and then it allows for movement. You know, structure is another way of saying support. Then movement, because muscles are attached to these bones, and this then dog can move towards the bone. The jaws can move and chew on the bone. By the way, giving bones to dogs is kind of controversial, because if they ever splint off and get sharp little pieces, they can wreak havoc in the GI tract. So some people swear by them. I'm talking about bones now given to dogs, and some people swear at them. you got to be very careful. Most of my dogs have been too big, and they pulverize the bones, and they end up getting a lot of sharp little pieces of bone that I don't let them eat. So I tend not to give bones, but my dogs are very large, so this bone would be pulverized to nothing. Okay, well, I saw this too when I was searching for images. And it reminded me of a dog I know. It's owned by one of my students. Beware, dog can't hold its liquor. Wow, now we're talking about giving everybody licks. This reminds me of the female pit bull, Georgia, owned by one of my students. So I just had to give a shout out to Georgia because when I saw this Georgia, it had you all over it, kiddo. Okay, anyway, well, bones, have a couple prefixes that can mean bone. Here we go, osteo or osti, I guess. So be aware of that, that's a prefix. And then I've got an example of one, of course, osteology, the study of bone. And that's what we're doing in this lesson. Now, I'm gonna show you the figures of bones I guess a diagram might be better. A diagram depicting the horse bone, or the skeleton, I should say, all the bones. And you can find these diagrams all over the place. And the key is, you know, it does su provide support, movement with the use of muscles. And then you should know protection too. I mean, look at this rib cage. That's provi providing protection for a lot of internal organs. And then all the way from the brain to the tail, the spinal cord is protected by bone. Very important spinal cord, part of the central nervous system. Well, you can pause this and look at that skeleton or look for other diagrams. I'm going to show you the cat here. And again, you can see there's a lot of area where there isn't any bone. I mean, look at right through here. There is no bone supporting the animal, but there's muscle and there's other tissue. So these skeletons are great. And then the one of the dog, I want to stop and pause a little bit. And I'm going to enlarge this here. I think I can without blurring out things. Because I like this diagram because it talks about the vertebral column. And so let me point that out. The vertebral column is those bones that articulate with each other that protect the spinal cord. And you should know the spinal cord itself, the nervous tissue, ends someplace in the sacrum. So there is really no spinal cord in the tail vertebra, which is also called the caudal vertebra. So let's point out the group, groups of vertebra that surround the spinal cord. The most cranial group is called the cervical vertebra. 
There's actually seven in the dog, seven in the horse, seven in the cat, and in fact, I think there's seven in every mammal there is, except I think there's one exception. Okay, so then, another thing you should know, that the number one cervical vertebra is often called C1, and it's also called the atlas, A-T-L-A-S. The second one is C2, and that's the axis, A-X-I-S. So those are some formations you should know, okay? And then the thoracic vertebra basically are attached to the rib cage. Lumbar really is the waist. The sacral vertebra, they call it sacrum there, I call it sacral vertebra, is really the pelvis, pelvic region. And then the caudal vertebra, or otherwise known as the tail vertebra, or I've got a third name here, I'm going to scroll over, the coccygeal vertebra. So there's three names for that group. Wouldn't you know it, the anatomists do this. There's that term, femur. And let's do a few other things. Of course, we all know that these are the rib ribs, okay? You probably should know that right in front of the ribs here coming off is the humerus. I'm naming some of these because, you know, to get them on the test, we should know some of these things. Okay, I'm going to stop here with that. Okay, we're going to do the two types of bone, I guess, on structure. You could call it compact bone or spongy bone. And they've got a nice diagram here, compact bone, very dense, spongy, very porous. And this diagram is nice because it reminds us that inside these bones, there's yellow marrow. Okay, this might be called red marrow. Not sure. The picture doesn't show it very well, but there's really two types of marrow, too. Okay, other ways to talk about bone. Uh, we can talk about their morphology. Morphology, that's M-O-R-P-H-O-L-O-G-Y, means the study of structure. So some bones are long. Some are short. Some are flat. And then the smallest bone, the stirrup stirrup. I'll maybe give you a hint if you don't know where that is. Here's the hint. I can't hear you. Okay. On to something else here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how bone is formed. It's kind of interesting. You should know like when bones heal, there's got to be some new bone growth. And you can pause as much as you want. I just want to point out a few things. You start over here on the left and go number-wise to the right. Here's a nice word, ossification. That means the formation of bone. You should see that it starts with cartilage. There's primary ossification center. That means like where the bone is going to start making itself. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, there's a lot of remodeling and you can study this for a long time, but I wanted to point out, look at there's a blood vessel that comes through the wall of the long bone, and I'm going to name that here in a minute, but you can see the progress, and it's very interesting that the blood vessels have to come in here. It can't be really on top because that's where a bone articulates, and that's what this means, articular cartilage. It articulates with another bone or structure. So you can't have a blood vessel where things are moving that much. And you can have one here. That's a hole in the bone. And here's a hole in the bone. So if you want to talk about those holes in the bone, and sometimes when you find a long bone, especially if it's been out dried and has no other tissue on the bone, a lot of times you can find these holes. And those holes are called nutrient foramens. Now I have it singular there. So nutrient, in this case, this hole here is called a nutrient foramen. A foramen is a passageway through some structure. And a lot of times that structure is a bone. It doesn't have to be a bone. But when you see foramen, it's a passageway. And nutrient means it's carrying nutrients into the bone marrow, in this case, and the bone 
and it happens to be a blood vessel. Now let's talk a little bit about the types of cells that make up bone. You should know bone is a living tissue. I mean, there's some parts of it that's really ossified and calcified, you'd say, and it's got very few living cells in that. But bone can grow. Bone can be um, reabsorbed. So here's the four main cell types that I want to concentrate on. Well, look at, they all start with osteo. Okay, so osteogenic. When you see genic, that means producing. So these are the cells that are going to produce basically everything else. Okay, all the other bone cells. If you want to say what cells make up bone, you could say osteocytes. They are the bone matrix. They are living and I guess I could say using oxygen. I didn't want to say breathing. Now, osteoblasts. I don't like that name because when you see blast, sometimes most people, I think myself included, sounds like you're destroying something, but you're actually forming bone. These are the cells that form bone. They create new bone. So the only way I can work this out is that B of blast, I say, oh, that's the building cell. Okay, so when I see osteoblast, B blast, that's the cells that make bone because then clast, osteoclasts, are cells that break down bone. Wow. Okay. So that takes a little bit of thinking. Let's go and show a picture of these cells. This doesn't add a whole lot, but it shows the osteogenic cell that will develop into other cells. Here's your osteoblast. It says it forms bone again, and then they can change into an osteocyte, which tends to maintain bone tissue. And then the osteoclast looks different. I think that's why I included this. It functions in the reabsorption of the bone matrix. That means it's going to tear down bone and actually then mobilize calcium. And this happens a lot with animals. Uh, especially lactating animals. Black milk has a lot of calcium in it, and a lot of times if the diet is deficient, these cells are breaking down bone so calcium can be maintained in the body, calcium levels in the blood and so forth. Here's a beautiful diagram. I'm kind of jealous because there's no way I could ever produce something like that, maybe. And this whole structure wants me to say that this is the functional unit of bone. When you look at bone, uh, there can be some central regions and then concentric circles of formation. And this is called an osteon, O-S-T-E-O-N. Okay, and I think, uh, let's see, get my little pointer here going. There it is. I spell it out beforehand, osteon, osteon. That's the functional unit of bone tissue. But you should see right in the middle here, there's nerves, artery, vein, lymph, because all the stuff is needed. And then osteoblast, there's my B, so I know that's going to build bone. Here's osteocyte, kind of maintaining bone. And then the osteoclast, which is going to tear down bone. Okay, so it's always fun to do a little histology, and you know histology is the study of tissue, no matter what the tissue is. Bone is a type of connective tissue, and we've got a femur here, although you would never be able to identify it as a femur unless it was labeled as such. But here we've got two things I want to point out the osteoid, and that's really a part of the bone before it's calcified. So we're getting building of bone here, and that's still not calcified there where the osteoid is. And then, of course, we remember the osteoblasts are there because they are building bone. Okay, I just wanted to show you a little histology there. Nice bone 
histology and then I've got like a little quiz here but I'm going to tell you what these labels are now this is where bone is being formed and I want to tell you what these labels mean because like a and so forth because it's kind of interesting now a is an osteoblast so I'm over here there's the blast there's the a and you know we're building bone blast building bone still can't get over the blast but anyway and then B is an osteocyte there's B osteoid C now remember that's an area before calcification but it's going to be calcified sooner or later D has an interesting name the cement line and that's when you study osteology that's the name they use for this line it's really the demarcation between already formed bone and then new born bone formation okay and that's the cement line you can see the line right there and then E is very solid bone and it's obviously got some osteocytes in it a few okay so that's very nice histology and I like this diagram because it gives me a transverse section of a long bone look at this is a cross section right a transverse section is perpendicular to the long axis and then if I look at the cut end I can see a cross section we've got compact bone you know for example this could be maybe a femur let's say it is you got compact bone very dense then you've got spongy bone. Those are the two bone types, at least classifying them as in terms of density. And this has bone marrow in it diagram because then that gives me uh, a reason to remember to blow this up here a little bit. And uh, we got to keep those names there. Okay, I guess I can go like that. And I like this because it's saying look at all the things going on in bone marrow you should know all blood cells come from bone marrows if you were deep into hematology you would know the name and function and eventual cell type of all these precursor cells some of our some of them are not precursor cells but most of them here are here's a urethrocyte okay well lo and behold they did a good job because they don't show a nucleus you know urethrocytes when they're ready to go to the blood don't have a nucleus but look at the cell right beside it this is probably a urethrocyte too and you're going to ask me or maybe tell me hey there's a nucleus so it can't be well all urethrocytes when they're first made when they're immature they have a nucleus they get rid of it so there's a urethrocyte red blood cell that's ready to go then down here we have an eosinophil we've talked about those when we talk about blood okay now some most of these other cell types in here are like precursor cells they're not ready to go yet they would not be found in the blood but with one exception or many exceptions I guess in a pathological state and that's where uh, hematology is so fascinating if you know all these precursors and see too many of them in the blood that's a sign that's a bad sign of something's happening also we have adipocytes adipocytes however you want to pronounce that word you know these are fat cells so it really makes a good uh, ending to this lesson the only other thing I want to show you is the list of illustrations used okay and I'm just going to get this out and enlarge it a little bit and end right here.